The College of Charleston Alumni Association is proud to present the 2014 Alumna of the Year Award to Carrie Ann Hurst, Class of 2001. I'm on my boat on the old stone. No, that I'm Carrie Ann Hurst. I'm a proud cougar of the Class of 2001. Well, I came to College of Charleston from Nashville, Tennessee, and I kind of had grown up in the music business. I knew right away when I got to Charleston, the aesthetic of it and kind of the vibe and the culture of the people was something that I was fascinated by. When I applied to the College of Charleston in 1997, it seemed very bohemian to me. It seemed very unique. The setting is completely mind-blowing. These creative people who were, seemed kind of bohemian, but they were in charge of the knowledge. That was fascinating for me. One of my favorite teachers at the College of Charleston was Quentin Baxter. He's beautiful, he's cool, and he was always hanging around Claire's Coffee House. And so I'm a senior in college, I'm about to graduate, I'm a couple credits short. Quentin, Taylor makes me a class, and this is just classic College of Charleston, like finding what you're good at and what you really need to know and then tailoring it to your experience. Quentin was able to make me a drum lab. It was the first time I ever sat behind a drum kit trying to, you know, grasp what it meant to be ahead of the beat. And it's because of that extra class that I was able to graduate in a timely fashion. Thank you, Quentin. Fast forward years later, I'm sitting behind a drum kit, nowhere near like a proper drummer, but loving playing the drums and really kind of figuring out how to do it as a part of our act. And it's just neat how it kind of all comes together in a, in a non-traditional way, you know, to kind of propel you forward. Well, Shovels and Rope started after Michael and I had made a uh, like a side project record together called Shovels and Rope. It kind of occurred to us that we might actually have a shot at playing in a, a wider circumference nationally if we just put all our eggs in one basket and committed to being in a band together, just the two of us kind of taking our egos out of it. We've just been touring around the country for about the last four years, just going strong, average 200 shows a year. It's been a, a beautiful journey from what you might call humble beginnings, you know, we played it the poorhouse for very many years on the back deck there on Mondays to everybody's kids and dogs and families and old friends and a lot of our skills were honed there. When we started to go outside of Charleston and especially around the southeast, that was an amazing adventure because it was like all of a sudden I knew every road in Georgia, every road in Tennessee, North Carolina, and then we went a little wider and all of a sudden we're in Ohio and Everybody's come to see us in Ohio. It was just been a crazy experience to just go in these big circles and one show at a time kind of build a fan base. It's just an incredible blessing. It's been an incredible adventure and uh, I'm so grateful for having had the opportunity to, to go on it. Being out is amazing because you never know where you're going to be. I wake up in a different town every day and it takes me a few minutes to register where I am. It's kind of like seeing the world at 80 miles an hour. Just a little taste, a little taste of every town that you go. And then, you know, it will start to catch up to you. And even though you're happy to be there, about three or four weeks into it, you start getting distracted. You know, can't wait to get home. And then, I tell you, like, you get on the 26th, and about the time you hit the Cosgrove, the windows go down, and it's got all too familiar funk coming. It's like the best experience. The city is an amazing place to come home to. I think my relationship with music defines me, kind of what I'm good at, how I build friends. When I fell in love with my husband, we used the music to communicate with each other, and then we used music to feed ourselves. Uh, when we were sleeping on an air mattress in a house up on Hester Street for a couple years, you know? But when I die, I hope they take my bones and they make an instrument out of it, because what the hell else good am I to do to anybody unless I'm making a racket somewhere the next, you know? I want to thank CFC, I want to thank obviously the Alumni Association for granting me the award. I want to thank my husband Michael for kind of taking this journey with me, but more than anything, I want to thank my mom and dad and my stepdad. My parents gifted me the opportunity to come to a city far from home on the Eastern Shore and uh, they facilitated me being in school and they helped me pay my bills and kind of make sure to keep me focused, knowing full well that I would eventually go off and be a pirate on a pirate ship or a boat captain on a steamboat or a rock musician or some other thing. They knew that the value of that education was intrinsic to my well-being as an adult and uh, they were willing to provide that for me at their own sacrifice and I'll always be grateful for that and I yeah, hope to do you know, my future kids the same service just to give them that chance to, to see the world through beautiful books and great professors and 
and hey, you know, get on a boat and go on an exchange program. I mean, it's just an, it's an amazing opportunity. Everybody should have it. Don't, don't